Hey, good evening, Facebook family. Welcome to another night of Marriage Monday with Nick and Trina Brinson. I was bringing you valuable information that will help your marriage to just be better. Yeah. What you think? We represent Crown Kingdom Cultural Center. Um, Pastor Finus Bush Jr. and Denise Bush are our um, church leadership, our pastors. And we want to start out mm -hmm. wishing them a very happy anniversary. I think yesterday mm -hmm. made... 41 years. Um, 41 years. 41 years as of yesterday. Man, and that's something we can all aspire to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 41 years. We're, what, 23 years, 22 years in? Well, we're married in 99 and that's 22, so, yeah. We're, we're, we're going to be 23. 23. Yeah, yeah, so 41 years is highly commendable. It is. So, and to take what they've learned in those 41 years and to sow it into... Um, the body of Christ is what they've done. And so us being here is an extension of that um, commitment to ministry from them. So we just want to um, make sure to recognize our pastor, uh, Bishop Bush, and his wife, Denise Bush, for their 41 years and their um, their anniversary, which they celebrated on yesterday. All right. So we have some folks coming in. Yeah, we, we got have. a few coming in tonight. Uh, we got Trey. Trey Smith, Brother Wade Smith, most people know him as Brother Wade Smith. Oh, man, we got my cousin Tammy Tam, on tonight. Yeah. How you doing, Tam? What's up, baby? Everything good with you, I hope. Family. Yeah, Paula Dawson. Paula Waugh. Paula Waugh. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. Dobson is her uh, maiden name. I was like, what you mean, Dobson? That's Paula Waugh. <laughs> <laughs> She's been married a long time, too. I think she recently had an anniversary, um, and I'm sure they're, uh, I think, I want to say 30 years or so in. You have to help me out, Paula, how many years, but they have quite a few years in as well. They have a successful marriage. 30 years. There we go. I was right on it. 30 years. So we definitely want to recognize all that wisdom that comes with um, sustaining a marriage because it takes work. It does. You know, marriage is good, but marriage, is, marriage can be hard. There's always some hard parts. Um, I'm always skeptical of people that say oh marriage is not hard why do people say that and i'm thinking why do you tell people that it's not <laughs> and then they think when they run into the hard parts they're thinking they're doing something wrong because yeah. that's exactly what i thought when we got to the hard parts i was like okay this ain't working now you're just bringing two different entities together and to become one and that's what you work on the whole time becoming one yeah uh, i just want to say hello to elder simpkins tonight thank you for joining us and we got Elgin uh, Wright. Yeah, Elgin, Elgin Wright. Elgin Geneva. Mm -hmm. We got Team Overflow in the house. Um, Brother Charles Brown. We have Elder Charles Brown and Francine, Francine Brown. So, yeah, yeah we just want to just say we want to thank y'all for, for joining us tonight. As we do every Monday night that we're on, we just want to thank y'all for coming in just to get a little bit of what we have to say. Yeah, so uh, Sheena is sharing. I see that, and we encourage all of you to go ahead and share with at least one or two people. Um, more is better. Um, so it's just, I, we're just always amazed at how far these videos um, go um, and how it keeps getting circulated. So that's what we want is to have them out there circulating so people can benefit from the information that we're sharing. So, so all right, with that said, Let's get into the lesson tonight. Tonight we're going to talk about the P, P, and the P. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> you just be making up these phrases. <laughs> okay. But it is. It's the P, acronym. P, P. Yeah, P, P, P. And that is, um, what we say? What we talking about? <laughs> Got the topic. Yeah, I forgot the topic. I know we're talking about peace, but I forgot what the P, the P, and the P. Pitfalls okay. that prevent peace. And that's just honest, y'all. I forgot that quick. Pitfalls, Pitfalls that, that prevent, prevent peace. peace. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know I just remember the acronym. But well, we anyway. know that peace is really the goal. The goal, yes. If you keep in mind that the merit, the purpose of your goal um, is peace, and we know that. Um, the relationship between husband and wife is designed to be uh, like that of Christ with the church. That's our example. And uh, Christ was a savior. He brought about peace. He brought about salvation. Mm -hmm. And so our marriage, the purpose of our marriage is uh, similar. It is to bring about 
peace. Right. And we got a few talking points tonight that we're going to talk about that will help you uh, keep that peace in your marriage. So with that said, let's get to the first talking point. Um, the first pitfall that we're going to talk about that you probably need to avoid is comparing yourself with other people. Yeah. Comparing yourself with other, other people. couples. Or couples, yes. Yeah, other situations. Mm -hmm. Because no, no two situations are the same. You know, you're dealing with, you are a different person and the people that you're dealing with, the person that you're dealing with, they're different. So you can't really go outside of this union yeah. and say that we want to try to be like them. Yeah. Because now there's an invasion of what you and your your spouse is trying to build and what y'all are trying to become one. So be careful about how you compare yourself uh, with other people. No two relationships are identical. That's impossible. You could have identical twins married to uh, the siblings of identical twins. The relationships are not going to be identical. Every relationship is different. Every relationship is unique. And you can be inspired by others, but you have to understand that your journey with your spouse is a unique experience between the two of you. Right. And so we that's what we wanted, why we discourage comparing to others. It only brings about uh, shortcomings that are not really shortcomings. They're just differences. Differences in the relationship flows. You can always be inspired by others. You can say, oh, we like the way they work together. We like the way they, um, you know, chose to do their finances. You know, you can use things as inspiration, but you need to know that you can't um, make a decision about how your relationship is going to flow strictly based on what someone else did, even if that someone else is your parents or your in-laws. Right. That doesn't mean that that's what's right for you. You got to get to know your spouse. Right. You got to get to know yourself in order for the two of you to figure out what works best in your marriage in order for you to have peace in your relationship. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing we really want to emphasize is that um, you've heard the phrase comparison kills and it does, it kills your peace that comparison, it kills your confidence, it kills um, the union between the two of you. And that confidence in, that you have in each other, mm -hmm. you know that, that understanding, it, it kills that because I can't compare myself to another man and, and, it, and it's really not good for my wife to compare me to another man hoping right. in her mind I can do what he does because exactly. I can't that's not me. But, you know, just be uh, careful and be um, understanding that you should not, you know, compare yourself with others. Mm -hmm. Sheena uh, quoted that scripture, that comparison is the thief of joy. Right, that's good. It absolutely mm -hmm. is. It, it is. steals your joy, steals your peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have to be real careful. And in today's world where we spend so much time looking at social media and people... Um, giving the world a view of themselves that they choose to give, which is never the whole picture. Mm -hmm. So we have to be mindful that, yes, there may be great moments in other people's relationships. Celebrate those great moments with that family. But don't let that evoke jealousy in you. And don't make that evoke an insecurity in you, thinking that there's something wrong with your family or your relationship just because, you know, you don't have a picture to put up like, you know somebody else put up that's that's not really what it's about you don't really know what go what's behind that picture you know you don't really know if what brought them joy is the same thing that will bring you joy right and so mm -hmm. you have to you got to stay in your own house that's right your, your lane <laughs> yeah you know, your wife lane or you and your husband lane you got to stay in that lane that's going to help y'all progress to the next stages in life because there are stages to this marriage we hadn't talked about that much but there are stages to this marriage that you go through when, as you get older. Um, you mean like seasons? Seasons, stages, mm -hmm. yeah. We talked about it some. Okay. So just continue to, to grow together mm -hmm. and not try to grow with somebody else. Another thing, uh, sort of along the same lines, is to be mindful about competing against one another. Competition can be healthy, but competition against your spouse that's not what you want unless you're trying to outdo each other on a positive end as right. in giving or loving or serving, you know, but just competition as in comparing incomes, comparing, um, 
I don't know, just, you know, competing against each other, having that spirit of competition as opposed to being able to celebrate your spouse's wins, knowing that those are, are my wins too. His win is not my loss. His win is my win too, right. and vice versa. So mm -hmm. if I got a promotion at work, then he has no reason to be jealous of that. He should be celebrating and just as happy about it as I am because we're on the same team. Mm -hmm. Increase in promotion for me means increase in promotion for him and vice versa. Yep. It's a family unit that yeah. gets the promotion. Yeah, we're on the same team. Right. And um I like that um, you know, when we play these uh games at you know, on game night sometimes we played in the past, you know, they we created teams and those two the couples were a team themselves and they were competing against other couples. Right. In the spirit of competition and gamemanship. Not saying that, okay, we're better than you and, and this, we're going to uh, hold ourselves higher than you. Nothing like that. That was the spirit of fun. But when we talk about team, at that idea, we produce teamwork, pr teamwork promoting and teamwork. promoting teamwork. Mm -hmm. So that's when we, we uh, compete as couples. That's what we're doing. We're actually helping you become more like one. Yeah, it's more about teamwork. Right. Uh, the competition is to enforce solidify you the couple as a team and that's really what makes it fun it is all right yeah. and just don't get into that like she said that spirit of, of competition with each other that's going to cause stagnation in your marriage mm -hmm. that's where a lot of sometimes the money issues come in too mm -hmm. it's where you start comparing who makes how much money or how much one person contributes financially to the household and the other and then equating that with your value to the relationship that that can't be that mindset has to intentionally be avoided and has to intentionally be changed you got to renew your mind to the point that we are a team mm -hmm. we are a team and so we're not here to compete against one another we're only here to um to to win together right all right next talking point mm -hmm. Uh, lack of preparation. What does that mean? The lack of preparation. You have got to prepare for whatever you're going going to go through. You know there are things that if you don't prepare yourself, you're preparing to fail. And if you don't prepare together, you are preparing to fail together. And that causes and that talk about something that steal your peace. Oh, that'll yeah. steal your peace quickly. Yes. When when you know you should prepare for something and then it doesn't happen or then you fail at it. Uh, because you, the both of you knew you should have did something to prepare, that will cause your peace to go out the window very quickly. And we've, we've had that situation a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we have to pick up the pieces and learn from it and, and keep moving. Like we tell you, a lot of stuff that we go through and we talk about, we've been through it. And sometimes that season come back again until we learn the proper way to deal with it the first time. So, yeah, just learn to prepare uh, when you're, when you're uh, trying to work together. Yeah, and that has to be intentional. Preparation, when you're talking about um, as a couple, it has to be intentional. Because you can be in your head and have an idea of what you want to do. But if you have not been intentional about submitting those ideas to your spouse, and the two of you coming into agreement about what you're going to do, then it's, it, it does you no good. You're not on the same page, and that becomes a source of frustration, which absolutely steals peace. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important to, um, it, Paula just said exactly what I was about to say, to make sure that you're prayerful and to make sure that you prepare for what it is that you, you are going to do um, together to make sure that you are in agreement. Agreement is mm -hmm. critical to marriage. Sometimes right. you can make an agreement and you fail. But as a couple or as a team, that's still a win. Right. Because you're on the same page. Granted, it might not have worked out like you both wanted it to, but you're on the same page and it does that failure doesn't cause division among right. you. It's still a reflection of your unity. As long as what, what, what happened and failed that y'all agreed to do and it failed, but if somebody's in, in an agreement and they don't agree with what happened and then you're like, okay, you just go ahead and do what you're going to do and it failed... That's the spirit of peace. That, that's going to take the peace right out of the relationship. I need so you to say that again. I, I yeah, yeah. got lost there. If we're talking about something, uh -huh. and you said um, we're trying to prepare, but if we don't agree with it, 
And we're just like, okay, we'll just go with your idea. Even though I don't agree, we're going to go with your idea. That sounds like agreement, but don't come back later and say, I know we shouldn't have did that because I knew we should have did it like this. That's going to steal the peace right out of that situation. I see what you're saying. So if you're in agreement with your spouse, be in agreement. Right. Submit to the agreement that the two of you have decided. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that is that's a critical piece. And that can be hard to do sometimes. But when you're committed to the relationship more than you're committed to your own ideas and you being right, that's how your relationship grows. Mm -hmm. Is you have to be committed to, OK, I'm going to support your idea um, because we're agreeing to go that way. Right. And it's not having that. I told you so spirit. And that can come up. That can be hard. Mm. Not to not to kind of throw that back into your spouse's face because then it becomes a competition of, well, my way was right. You should have gone my way. And if it fails, you both know it failed. Mm -hmm. You don't have to rub it in the other person's face. You can just, you know, both of you chalk it up. That that's what we agreed to do. It didn't work out. That's okay. We revamp and move on from there. Yep. But what we're not going to do is attack each other. Right. Are you done with that talking about me? All right. Outside voices. What do we mean by outside voices? Is that a question for me? Yeah, I'm just asking you a question. I, I know it was I, rhetorical. I know it is. Okay. No. Um, outside voices refers to people outside of your marriage that have um, that are in your ear mm -hmm. and that get into your head more so than your spouse does. And so if somebody is telling you something contrary to what you and your spouse have agreed upon, that's an outside voice that you, you that you need to be aware of that may be an enemy to your marriage. Regardless of, of who that voice comes through or who that person is that has the opposing opinion. Right. If you're making decisions between the two of you, then that's where the conversation goes. Right. If the two of you decide to take heed to an outside voice, that's fine if the two of you agree, agree to consider right. that. But the problem comes in is when you have outside voices influencing you against each other, each other and against what you have agreed upon. And against the word of God. Yeah. Mm. So that's when that's when the problem comes in with the outside voices. So you have to be wise at um, what you're listening to, mm -hmm. who you're listening to. You have to be wise about those things and always guard your your heart and guard your marriage guard that relationship right and right now really if if me and if me and my wife put ourselves in perspective we are the outside voices in your marriage we're nowhere near the inside voice that you should be listening to in your marriage what we do is give you information that hopefully you and your spouse right. can use but if what we're saying and one of y'all don't agree with it it's almost like you can't use what we're talking about until the other person is ready to agree to listen just like you are so don't let what we do on Monday night influence your marriage wrongly, even though we're giving you information. Good, we think good information. It's about being yeah. wise. It's about wisdom and knowing how to take the information that you're receiving. So we're not going to tell you anything that we think is dangerous or bad for your relationship, but you have to be wise enough to process it um, in light of your own marriage. Right. Absolutely. Now let's talk about the inside voice. The inside voice. What goes on in the inside voice? Like my wife always tell me sometimes, okay, what conversation are you having in your head? I need to know what's going on. What are you talking about in your mind? And then, you know, I can I can talk about it, and that voice is, that's, that's talking to me, and I'm sitting there thinking about, okay, what she is saying. And then the inside voice, I need to let her hear what I'm thinking so we can talk about it and communicate effectively. When you communicate with yourself, that's a one-sided conversation. And maybe the other person that's on the outside need to listen to what you got going on inside. Well, I can see your dimples. What you doing with that? Why your face all squinched up like that? First of all, my dimples are an asset. It is so cute. Yeah, they are. So don't come at me <laughs> like I'm making a bad face. Face all squinched up. Go ahead. Well, you, you're speaking the truth. Mm-hmm. It becomes very dangerous to the marriage when I call it um, you making unilateral decisions. You know, a marriage is, is bilateral. You've got 
two people working together as one. And if you got two people and only one person is thinking by themselves, talking by themselves, making decisions by themselves, you're leaving out that second person. And that is divisive to your relationship. It's a peace dealer. And there is one particular gender in the relationship that is notorious for having those inner thoughts and maybe being hesitant to vocalize what those thoughts are. It can vary from from pers- from couple to couple, so I can- it's not hardcore, but you know, there is a pattern that's pretty well documented that one particular gender has a tendency to be more inward in conversation rather than to be vocal in conversation. So we're just going to leave that there. Did I say it nicely? I, yes, you, you were nice with it. Yeah, so it's very important to make sure that you're talking and not staying in your head. You've got to give a voice so that your spouse can, I don't care how well your spouse knows you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm ignoring that comment from Brother Charles Brown. <laughs> no matter how well your spouse knows you, it's not fair to expect your spouse to uh, read your mind. It's not no. fair. It's not fair. You do need to say it, you know, especially when you're trying to come to some kind of consensus or an agreement. It's very important for you to voice and not assume that your spouse uh, knows what you're thinking. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, That's very well put. Yeah. So those inside voices, how you counsel yourself sometimes can be um, a peace stealer, something that is a pitfall. Mm -hmm. You know, you feel like, oh, well, I I know what I'm thinking. I know what I'm doing. This is right. There's no reason to even discuss this. Oh, but there is because there are two of you. It is. Yeah. So you got to talk about it. Mm -hmm. You have to talk about it. You got to vocalize those thoughts. And um, it makes the relationship when you choose to be more vulnerable um, with your spouse and to be open and honest, it makes the relationship better. And you have to realize that that's ultimately the goal is for the two of you to flow in peace. And to be honest, the more, the better you get at that, it is sometimes where you can say less and be on the same page. You can. But listen, that comes after many, many, many years, um, to get to that point. Yes, it does. All right. Another point we're going to talk about is failure to to prioritize the relationship. Failure to prioritize the relationship. And as marriages, as as you get older in your marriage, and then you you got work responsibilities that become important, you can lose failure to prioritize the relationship. Mm -hmm. And you just have to be conscious, or one of us have to understand that we need to bring this point up when that type of communication is being lost or that type of of importance in the relationship is being lost. Somebody has to vocalize that. You know, we are not spending enough time together. What what you got going on? You know, you need to get away from that computer. You're doing work. Get away from work. Come home and talk to me sometime. Somebody has to vocalize that. And just honest, my wife has been that person in this relationship to vocalize, okay, we ain't spending no time together. What you got going on here? You can't be ignoring me. I am a person in this house. I'm in this relationship. So, you know, one person or both have to understand that when they feel like they've been ignored. Mm-hmm. That's just somebody not had, prioritized. Right. You can't, you can't get married and expect that the, um, this person is always going to be there with you. You have to do the work that it takes to maintain the relationship. It's just not fair and it just doesn't work for you to um, decide that you're going to get married and then you stop taking care of the relationship. That's not going to work. That will not work. Inside of a marriage, each person needs to feel wanted. Each person needs to feel valuable to the relationship. Each person needs to feel that the marriage is serving their purpose and that they are able to serve their spouse's needs Mm -hmm. as well. That's a necessity. And so you have to prioritize the relationship in order to get those needs met. Find out what your spouse needs in order to feel um, that they're getting what they need from the marriage relationship. What works for one couple might not be the same thing that works for you. 
So you have to get to know your spouse and get to know yourself to know how to ask for what it is that you need. That's something I think a lot of people um, don't do is we don't ask for the things that we need. And so you have to be able to be vulnerable enough with your spouse and open enough to say, I need more time from you. Mm -hmm. I need, you know, to be physically close to you. I need for us to spend some undivided attention together. I need, you know, you need to be able to say what you need instead of um, yelling or acting out or being passive aggressive. Those things are not effective. So you have to be able to say what you need to your spouse and you have to be able to hear what your spouse needs and do what it takes to provide that from your spouse. Mm -hmm. So if your husband is saying, you know, I need for you to look beautiful when I get home. If that's what he needs, then then you signed up for it. Don't take that as being, oh, he's just being superficial. If that's something he needs and he, he don't want to look at you with a head scarf on when he comes home from work, then you give him something to look at when he comes home from work. Mm -hmm. And like you said, the need and, and um, you know, I need you to show me uh, some appreciation. Say thank you. That's right. Regularly when I need you, you know, some appreciation from me, even if I ask for it. Tell me anyway. Yeah. You know, because sometimes it, it's it's a situation where the other person may not be thinking and hadn't told you that in a while. Mm -hmm. You just need to be reminded. Yeah. Please tell me thank you sometime. I just need to be appreciated. Yeah. And that goes into us talking about love language, which we probably need to review at some point. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt. Yeah. At all. So, you know, let the person know um, what, what you, need. you need in yeah. a relationship. Yeah. And don't be embarrassed to be... Um, vulnerable enough to show that you have a need everybody has needs yep everybody has needs and you know the saying goes a closed mouth don't get fed it does not so you have to be able to say what it is that you need it's your spouse it's the most important relationship you have here in the earth next to your relationship with god do what you need to do to make that relationship um peaceful right and, and communicating clearly to your spouse what you need is a must. It's a must. You can't be too bashful to, to say it. Sometimes you got to put yourself out there and risk, you know, risk the embarrassment, risk the rejection. But the more you build your relationship up and the two of you meet each other's needs, uh, your relationship becomes stronger to the point that you can say anything that you need to your spouse. And, I mean, this can go a long way. The need thing can be a, a, a segment in itself because when you're talking about what, what you need from the relationship, a lot of that it can come from just how the person needs to feel appreciated or just what the person wants. Do you feel unappreciated? Mm, no. Okay, you kept bringing it up. I no. didn't know if you was no. being. Because I, I've, I've heard this, you know, when I've talked to people, you know, outside of, of the Marriage Monday that, that we talk and the one thing they talk about is... Um, Sometimes I don't feel like I'm appreciated for what I do. And it made me think about, you know, if I go somewhere else, would that person make me feel appreciated? And I basically told the other person, I said, well, you need to talk to them. I'm not going to say. If the, them meaning and, their spouse? Or? Yeah, talk to the spouse okay. about need what you need. You know, yeah, just mm -hmm. tell them you need to feel yeah. appreciated because you got a need. That ain't gonna. That's not being filled. Right. And now, in your mind, you think you need to go somewhere else and get it, but you hadn't talked to them about it. Yeah, you gotta start. Start, start at, at home. home. And you know that's where, that's where this point came to my mind. That you know anything beyond causing you hurt or breaking the law, you almost can give your partner. You know, I don't. I don't suggest breaking the law to give your partner what they want. And I don't suggest causing yourself any injury to get them what they want. But without with, with those things, you know, try to try to be um, try to acquiesce to your partner and give them what they need mm -hmm. in the marriage. Sandra made a good point. Uh, Elder Simmons said that I think I help me out because you know I maybe. Which one you read? Uh, it's very important. It, excuse it for you to communicate. Because the wrong tone will bring confusion. Yes, that's very true. We had that issue for a long time. Mm -hmm. And and part of it is, um, for me, I just wasn't aware of what was the problem 
with the tone and I'm still not that good at it, you know, because it goes back to, um, you know, everybody comes into the marriage with the past, with the childhood, with the, you know, adulthood or whatever, however old you are when you get married, you come with some history and some things that have made you who you are to that point. And so it can be, um, it's much harder to see what other people are doing wrong than it is to see yourself objectively. And so, you know, if he would say something about, well, it's your tone, the way you're saying it, I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. And that's literally what I would say. I, I don't know what you're talking about as far as the tone. And it's, it's still very hard for me um, to hear what it is that's not appreciated as far as the tone goes. But part of making the marriage work has to be that he's learning not to interpret what I say as being something as coming from a different place than where I intend for it to come from. So part of that is just getting to know your spouse. You know, as I work on me, he has to learn to work with me. Mm -hmm. And that goes both ways. Yep. And so we have to learn each other. Okay. What is that last the comment down there? I can't see it. Um, Can you give some way to prevent your ministry from what is that word? Overshadowing. Oh your yeah, relationship. that balance. Lord have mercy, yeah. Sister Rosa. That's a whole. That might be our. That's a good topic. We need to put in the rotation. Yeah, how to uh, balance your uh, ministry or your work f to keep that from overshadowing your relationship. It goes back to priority because that's definitely a peace stealer. And definitely a peace stealer. Uh, what do you want to say something on that briefly? To my uh, how you. What she said. Well. You know, you have to definitely understand that your your marriage is the most important thing. That is far ties over your job, even over your ministry. Because you, you can't you gotta learn how to prioritize these things to to prevent the mar the, the ministry or the job from overshadowing it. And all of us done fell in those those pitfalls of, of the job overshadowing um the marriage. But that's why you you go through um, classes and go through counseling to bring it all back in focus. So one way to to make sure that your 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 um your job or your 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 ministry is not overshadowing is we make date night a priority. It's a thing we do and and right now we don't deviate from it much, but we make time for each other. We schedule that time somehow, some point through the weekend. We're going to have a date night. From Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we're going to do something together. Is when you don't prioritize each other is when your ministry becomes important. That's when your job becomes more important because you're spending more time with those activities. Mm -hmm. So you got to learn to reframe and pull back. I mean, even the bishop mentioned something yesterday uh, while he was talking about the length of time him and uh, First Lady uh, Bush were been married for 41 years. He made a point. They've been married for 41 years. He said they've never had a month together by themselves. You think about how many months are in 41 years. And he can sit back and say he's always been with people or been around people with their marriage. He said there's never been a month that they've had to themselves where she's actually had him by herself. And I thought that was pretty significant. If you think about the length of time that they've been together. So learn how to prioritize the marriage over those activities. Because God can't honor that. It's hard for God to honor that. Um, your ministry and your job over your marriage. Well, and your ministry is better when your marriage is stable and strong. And when you have the support you need and the stability at home. That gives you a stronger platform in ministry. And God requires of us to take care of our homes. He, there's, there's never a place in the Bible where, um, where God gave someone the, I want to say permission or indication to not take care of their family. In fact, you can find numerous scriptures that talk about how important it is. You know, even the station of a deacon. You you don't even need to try to apply to be a deacon if your family, your home life is not right. Right. You know, as believers, we are, you know, the Bible says you're worse than an unbeliever if you don't take care of your family. 
You're supposed to leave an inheritance for your children's children. Family is very important to God. And if you're going to be in ministry, you have to recognize how important it is for you to take care of your family as well. Your family cannot be on the back burner. You have to invest time in your family. Just like you invest, you don't go out there and minister without being prepared. Nope. You have to understand that your marriage is a reflection of God in your life. It's a reflection of being aligned with uh, Christ and having the mind of Christ. All of that um, is, uh, your marriage should be a reflection of that. And so, yeah, that's, that's such a good topic, uh, Sister Rose. I think we probably need to take some time and uh, maybe address that officially as a topic you know right. how to how to bring about that balance between your um your occupation your um, ministry responsibilities and your your family life how do you balance that right and i just looked up the scripture that i was thinking about when we we're talking about balancing your family over and your life over all things including ministry and your job it goes first timothy uh five and five and eight it says if any provide not for his own and especially for those of his own house, he have denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Which is an unbeliever. Which is an unbeliever. Yeah. You have denied the faith. That means you denied God. Yeah. So if you don't take care of your own house. So your ministry cannot be as God intends it to be if you are not prioritizing or putting into proper um putting in proper care mm -hmm. to take care of your home which includes your spouse and your children. Take care of your home. It's very right. important. Like Elder Simmons said, marriage is your first That's ministry. Right. It is. First Timothy 5 and 8. Thank you, uh, Minister Roberts, for that. Go and read it. So, with that said, I think that... That's pretty good. Did that cover Somebody? everything we want to talk about? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So we hope you find peace in your marriage and that you pursue peace. That's a scripture I really hadn't focused on until I had to teach it to the children in children's church. Hmm. And that thing stuck with me. I probably more than it did with them. Pursue peace. That means to pursue something, you're putting a lot of energy into it. it you have it in your, your sights. You're focused on it. It's what drives you is to pursue peace. Okay. So, with that said, we want to just continue to wish Bishop and First Lady a, a happy, happy anniversary, anniversary, 41 years strong yeah. and counting. Mm -hmm. And with that said, you got anything else? Any closing thoughts? I do not. All right. With that said, we appreciate y'all joining us tonight. Continue to share and like uh, what we're doing here. And we will be back next Monday. God's will. With that said, from the lady and the coach. We love y'all. Good night.